popping, YouTube family. It's your boy Dwight. Welcome back to the channel, Silverback CIs. Hope all is well with everybody. First off, do me a huge favor. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you can be notified when I post new content. Now today, I'm coming with a video from a fragrance house that I've never featured on the channel. I've heard a decent amount in the fragrance community about their fragrances, and that's Goldfield and Banks. This is my first one. Keep it locked. Let's get down to business. Today I'm debuting the house of Goldfield and Banks, and the first fragrance that I had heard a lot about is Bohemian Line. Here is the box presentation. And there's lots going on with this box presentation, but I'll get to that in a second. On your top, you got Bohemian Line, the name. On the back of it, all the notes to the fragrances on there and more product information. This is a 3.4 ounce, 100 ml bottle. On your bottom, batch code and barcode information, like on most boxes. But as you can tell already right off the bat by the color combination that they got on this box, very, very citrus heavy, tropical type of scent profile. Your bottle rests in this bed right here. You got this little Goldfield and Banks card. It really ain't much going on with the car, so it ain't really much to talk about. And then this thing rests down over the top of it, just like so. We're going to put that there. Here is your bottle presentation. Glass bottle, go fill and banks, and the name of the fragrance on the front of the glass. Top of your bottle, go fill and banks. It's a wooden cap, real wood. Bottom of the bottle. Product information that you can't really see because it's engraved into the grass, glass, and uh, batch code. Let's give this thing a spray. Gold atomizer. Big sprayer. Decent. A little better than decent as far as the atomizer is concerned. What you get for this for accords is it's citrus, fresh, woody, green, and spicy. With... Uh, Top notes of finger lime, Italian bergamot, mid notes of Atlas cedar and Australian sandalwood, and base notes of coriander seed and Haitian vetiver. Mm. 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 Now this one right here, right off the bat, is a spring and summertime uh, staple. It's going to be a staple for me, but mostly in the summertime. 2024 summer list going to definitely have some new faces on it from some of the things that I've been inquiring lately in my collection. But what do I get with this one here? That lime note is very, very prevalent in that opening. And it intertwines with the bergamot, but it still stays on top as far as the most prevalent citrus note in this fragrance right here. But as you begin to dry down, it does get woody and a little bit green and spicy. But those citrus notes, they hang out throughout the duration of this fragrance here. This one here is definitely going to be vacation worthy. Just a uh, dumb reach, if you will, just for a lack of a de of other way to put the words. This is one you can just grab and go. You don't have to think about it any season, almost any reason as far as the scent profile. But I will say it's not strong enough to fight through those bitterly cold days in the wintertime. So, of course, I will reach for something else. You can pull this off in the fall, but anytime you're traveling, going on cruises, outside get-togethers, barbecues, uh, family uh, reunions, you name it. Anything outside, that's when I would really want to wear this thing here. Now, you could pull it off as far as wearing it to the office, but this is one of those fragrances here that got pretty decent longevity around that seven, eight-hour uh, mark, but it does its best in those first probably five hours of application. And to me, some good breeze, good sunlight, good outdoor out activities is when you really, really want to put this fragrance here to use because that's when you really, really get the best out of the notes. The notes pop a little bit more with some heat. I don't know very much about the House of Goldfield and Banks overall as far as smelling any of the other fragrances. I heard about the Indigenous Gingers fragrance, and I've also heard about, if I think the name is uh, Pacific Rock Moss. I haven't smelled either one of those. I'm looking to get a sample of the Dangerous Ginger one, Ginger one, and if I like it, I probably will add it to my collection. Pacific Rock Moss, I haven't smelled at all yet. 
But this one right here is everything that they made it out to when I see it in past videos or other uh, top tens and other people's channels who I actually respect their opinion and the things that they have to say about fragrance. But this one right here, I recommend that you get your nose on it, get you a sample, whether it be Scent Split or any other decanting websites out there that sell decants of fragrances. This one here, for me, I'm glad I blind bought it, but I'm in no position to tell you how to spend your money or like uh, EQ says on his channel, I'm not your financial advisor, but this one here, I strongly recommend. I can't wait for it to get a little warmer outside when you throw on your button-up shirts and your, uh, your golfing type of shorts and your loafers. This is one to be in heavy rotation. Look for it in the summer near you. That's my time. Peace.